Pandeism, or pandeism is a theological doctrine first delineated in the 18th century which combines aspects of pantheism with aspects of deism. It holds that the creator deity became the universe pantheism and ceased to exist as a separate and conscious entity deism holding that God does not interfere with the universe after its creation. Pandeism is proposed to explain, as it relates to deism, why God would create a universe and then appear to abandon it, and as to pantheism, the origin and purpose of the universe. The word pandeism is a hybrid blend of the root words pantheism and deism, combining ancient Greek, pan translate, pan, lit, all, with Latin, deus which means, God. It was perhaps first coined in the present meaning in 1859 by Moritz Lazarus and Heyman Steinthal. A pantheistic form of deism Pandeism falls within the traditional hierarchy of monistic and nontheistic philosophies addressing the nature of God. It is one of several subsets of deism. Over time there have been other schools of thought formed under the umbrella of deism including Christian deism, belief in deistic principles coupled with the moral teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, and pandeism, a belief that God became the entire universe and no longer exists as a separate being. For the history of the root words, pantheism and deism, see the overview of deism section, and history of pantheism section. The earliest use of the term pandeism appears to have been 1787, with another use related in 1838, a first appearance in a dictionary in 1849 in German, as pandeismus and pandeistisch, and an 1859 usage of pandeism, possibly in contrast to both pantheism and deism by Moritz Lazarus and Heyman Steinthal. Physicist and philosopher Max Bernhard Weinstein in his 1910 work Welt und Lebensanschauungen, Her Vorgegangen aus Religion, Philosophie und Naturkenntnis, World and Life Views, Emerging from Religion, Philosophy and Nature, presented the broadest and most far-reaching examination of pandeism written up to that point. Weinstein noted the distinction between pantheism and pandeism, stating, even if only by a letter d in place of th, we fundamentally differ pandeism from pantheism." But it has been noted that some pantheists have identified themselves as pandists as well, to underscore that, "...they share with the deists the idea that God is not a personal God who desires to be worshipped." Noting that Victorian scholar George Levine has suggested that secularism can bring the "...fullness," which "...religion has always promised." Other authors have since observed For others, this fullness is present in more religious-oriented pantheistic or pandeistic belief systems with, in the latter case, the inclusion of God as the ever-unfolding expression of a complex universe with an identifiable beginning but no teleological direction necessarily present. This is classed within a general tendency of postmodernity to be a stunning amalgamation of the views of William James and Max Weber, representing the movement away from self-denial toward a denial of the supernatural, which promises to fundamentally alter future geographies of mind and being by shifting the locus of causality from an exalted godhead to the domain of nature. It has also been suggested that many religions may classify themselves as pantheistic, but fit more essentially under the description of panentheistic or pandeistic. Topic. Progression Topic. The ancient world The earliest seeds of pandeism coincide with notions of monotheism, which generally can be traced back to the Atenism of Akhenaten, and the Babylonian era Marduk. Weinstein in particular identified the idea of primary matter derived from an original spirit as found by the ancient Egyptians to be a form of pandeism. Weinstein similarly found varieties of pandeism in the religious views held in China especially with respect to Taoism as expressed by Lao Tzu, India, especially in the Hindu Bhagavad Gita, and among various Greek and Roman philosophers. 6th century BC philosopher Xenophanes of Colophon has also been considered a pandeistic thinker. Weinstein wrote that Xenophanes spoke as a pandeist in stating that there was one God which abided ever in the selfsame place, moving not at all, and yet sees all over, thinks all over, and hears all over. 
He similarly found that ideas of pandeism were reflected in the ideas of Heraclitus, and of the Stoics. Weinstein also wrote that pandeism was especially expressed by the later students of the Platonic Pythagoreans and the Pythagorean Platonists, and among them specifically identified 3rd century BC philosopher Chrysippus, who affirmed that, "...the universe itself is God and the universal outpouring of its soul." As a pandeist as well, religious studies professor, F. E. Peters, however, found that, "...w hat appeared at the center of the Pythagorean tradition in philosophy, is another view of psyche that seems to owe little or nothing to the pan-vitalism or pan-deism that is the legacy of the Milesians. Amongst the Milesians, English historian of philosophy Andrew Gregory notes in particular that some construction using pan, whether it be pantheism, pandeism or pancubernism describes Anaximander reasonably well. Though he does go on to question whether Anaximander's view of the distinction between Apiron and Cosmos makes these labels technically relevant at all. Gottfried Groh in his 1787 interpretation of Pliny the Elder's Natural History, describes Pliny, a first-century figure, as if not a Spinozist, then perhaps a pandeist. From medieval times to the Enlightenment Weinstein examines the philosophy of 9th-century theologian Johannes Scotus Ereugena, who proposed that, "...God has created the world out of his own being," and identifies this as a form of pandeism, noting in particular that Ereugena's vision of God was one which does not know what it is, and learns this through the process of existing as its creation. In his great work, De Division Natura also called Perifician, probably completed around 867 AD, Ereugena proposed that the nature of the universe is divisible into four distinct classes. One that which creates and is not created. Two that which is created and creates. Three that which is created and does not create. For that which neither is created nor creates, the first stage is God as the ground or origin of all things, the second is the world of Platonic ideals or forms, the third is the holy physical manifestation of our universe, which does not create, the last is God as the final end or goal of all things, that into which the world of created things ultimately returns to completeness with the additional knowledge of having experienced this world. A contemporary statement of this idea is that since God is not a being, he is therefore not intelligible. This means not only that we cannot understand him, but also that he cannot understand himself. Creation is a kind of divine effort by God to understand himself, to see himself in a mirror." French journalist Jean-Jacques Gabot agreed, writing that a certain pantheism, or rather pandeism, emerges from his work where Neo-Platonic inspiration perfectly complements the strict Christian orthodoxy." Weinstein also found that 13th-century Catholic thinker Bonaventure—who championed the Platonic doctrine that ideas do not exist in rerum natura, but as ideals exemplified by the divine being, according to which actual things were formed—showed strong pandeistic inclinations. Of Nicholas of Cusa, who wrote of the unfolding of creation in God and the unfolding of the divine human mind in creation, Weinstein wrote that he was, to a certain extent, a pandeist. And, as to Franciscus Mercurius van Helmont, who had written A Cabalistical Dialogue Latin version first, 1677, in English 1682, placing matter and spirit on a continuum, and describing matter as a coalition of monads, Weinstein also found this to be a kind of pandeism. Weinstein found that pandeism was strongly expressed in the teachings of Giordano Bruno, who envisioned a deity which had no particular relation to one part of the infinite universe more than any other, and was immanent, as present on earth as in the heavens, subsuming in itself the multiplicity of existence. This was reiterated by others including Discover editor Corey S. Powell, who wrote that Bruno's cosmology was a tool for advancing an animist or pandeist theology. In the 1820s to 1830s, pandeism received some mention in Italy. In 1834, publisher Giovanni Silvestri posthumously published a volume of sermons of Italian Padre Filippo Nanetti di Bibulano, aka Il Filippo Nani, Padre da Lohano, 1759 to 1829, who named pandeism as being among beliefs he condemned, railing against. Jews, Muslims, Gentiles, schismatics, heretics, pandists, deists, and troubled, restless spirits. 
Nanetti further specifically criticized pandeism, declaring, to you, fatal pandeist, the laws that create nature are contingent and mutable, not another being in substance with forces driven by motions and developments. Within a few years thereafter came the 1838 publication of an anonymous treatise, Il legato di un vecchio i giovanni della sua patria, the legacy of an old man to the young people of his country whose author, discussing the theory of religion presented by Giambattista Vico a century earlier, mused that when man first saw meteor showers, his robust imagination recognized the effects as a cause, then deifying natural phenomena, he became a pandeist, an instructor of mythology, a priest, an augur. Neither Nanetti nor the 1838 author defines pandeism distinctly enough to cleanly distinguish it from pantheism, or possibly polytheism. But, again in 1838, another Italian, phrenologist Luigi Ferraris in memory regardanti la dottrina phrenologica, thoughts regarding the doctrine of phrenology, critically described Victor Cousin's philosophy as a doctrine which locates reason outside the human person, declaring man a fragment of God, introducing a sort of spiritual pandeism, absurd for us, and injurious to the Supreme Being. The 1859 German work, Zeitschrift für Volkerpsychologie und Sprachwissenschaft by philosophers and frequent collaborators Moritz Lazarus and Heyman Steinthal, distinguished pandeism unequivocally, declaring, Man stell es also den Denkern frei, ob sei theisten, pantheisten, atheisten, deisten und warum nicht auch pandeisten? Man leaves it to the philosophers, whether they are theists, pantheists, atheists, deists, and why not also pandists. Literary critic Hayden Carruth said of 18th century figure Alexander Pope that it was, Pope's rationalism and pandeism with which he wrote the greatest mock epic in English literature. According to American philosophy, an encyclopedia. Later Unitarian Christians such as William Ellery Channing, transcendentalists such as Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau, writers such as Walt Whitman and some pragmatists such as William James took a more pantheist or pandeist approach by rejecting views of God as separate from the world. The Belgian poet Robert Vivier wrote of the pandeism to be found in the works of 19th century novelist and poet Victor Hugo. Similarly in the 19th century, poet Alfred Tennyson revealed that his religious beliefs also defied convention, leaning towards agnosticism and pandeism. Charles Darwin has been described as having views that were a good match for deism, or possibly for pandeism. Friedrich Engels has also been described by historian Tristram Hunt as having pandeistic views. Post-Enlightenment philosophy In Asian philosophy Weinstein asserted the presence of pandeism in China, including in Lao Tzu's Taoism, and in India, especially in the Hindu Bhagavad Gita. Other philosophers have also pointed to pandeism as having a presence in the cultures of Asia. In 1833, religionist Godfrey Higgins theorized in his Anacalypsis that, "...pandeism was a doctrine, which had been received both by Buddhists and Brahmins." In 1896, historian Gustavo Uzielli described the world's population as influenced, "...by a superhuman idealism in Christianity, by an anti-human nihilism in Buddhism, and by an incipient but growing pandeism in Indian Brahmanism." But the following year, the Reverend Henry Grattan Guinness wrote critically that in India, God is everything, and everything is God, and, therefore, everything may be adored. Her pandeism is a pandemonium. Likewise, twenty years earlier, in 1877, Peruvian scholar and historian Carlos Luis Porta Carrero had written in an essay titled Philosophical Systems of India that in that country, metaphysics is pandeistic and degenerates into idealism. German political philosopher Jürgen Hartmann observes that Hindu pandeism has contributed to friction with monotheistic Islam. Pandeism in Chinese, Fan Zi Ran Shen Lun was described by Wen Kai, in a Peking University lecture, as embodying a major feature of Chinese philosophical thought, in that, there is a harmony between man and the divine, and they are equal. 
Zhang Dao Kui, Zhang Dao Kui of the China Three Gorges University proposed that the art of China's Three Gorges area is influenced by a representation of the romantic essence that is created when integrating rugged simplicity with the natural beauty spoken about by pandeism. Literary critic Wang Junkong Wang Jun Kong has written that, in Chinese folk religion as conveyed in the early novels of noted folk writer Yi Mei, Yi Mei the romantic spirit of pandeism can be seen everywhere. Wang Junkong additionally writes of Yi Mei's descriptions of the worship of reproduction under pandeism, as demonstrated in romantic songs sung by village people to show the strong impulse of vitality and humanity and the beauty of wildness. It has been noted that author Shen Kongwen has attributed a kind of hysteria that afflicts those young girls who commit suicide by jumping into caves. Luodong. Luodong. Two. The repressive local military culture that imposes strict sexual codes on women and to the influence of pandeism among Miao people. Since, for a nymphomaniac, jumping into a cave leads to the ultimate union with the god of the cave. Weinstein similarly found the views of 17th century Japanese Neo Confucian philosopher Yamazaki Ansai, who espoused a cosmology of universal mutual interconnectedness, to be especially consonant with pandeism. In Western philosophy In The Pilgrimage from Deism to Agnosticism, Moncure Daniel Conway stated that the term pandeism is an unscholarly combination. Otmar Hegemann described the new Catholicism of Franz Mach as actually a form of pandeism. In 1905, a few years before Weinstein's own extensive review was published, in 1910. A critique of pandeism similar to Conway's, as an unsightly combination of Greek and Latin, was made in a review of Weinstein's discussion of pandeism. The reviewer further criticizes Weinstein's broad assertions that Scotus Ereugena, Anselm of Canterbury, Nicholas of Cusa, Giordano Bruno, Mendelssohn, and Lessing all were pandists or leaned towards pandeism. Towards the beginning of World War I, an article in the Yale Sheffield Monthly published by the Yale University Sheffield Scientific School commented on speculation that the war means the death of Christianity and an era of pandeism or perhaps even the destruction of all which we call modern civilization and culture. The following year, early 19th century German philosopher Paul Friedrich Kohler wrote that pantheism, pandeism, monism, and dualism all refer to the same God illuminated in different ways, and that whatever the label, the human soul emanates from this God. Pandeism was noted by literary critic Martin Ludke as a philosophy expressed by early 20th century Portuguese poet Fernando Pessoa, especially as to those writings made under the pseudonym of Alberto Caro. Pandeism was likewise noted by authors like Brazilian journalist and writer Otavio de Faria, and British scholar and translator of Portuguese fiction Giovanni Pontiero, among others, to be an influence on the writings of noted mid-20th century Brazilian poet Carlos Nahar, of whom de Faria wrote that, "...the pandeism of Nahar is one of the strongest poetic ideas that we have reached in the world of poetry." Pandeism was also examined by theologian Charles Harchern, one of the chief disciples of process philosopher Alfred North Whitehead. In his Process Theology, an extension of Whitehead's work, Harchern preferred pandeism to pantheism, explaining that, "...it is not really the theos that is described." However, he specifically rejected pandeism early on, finding that a god who had, "...absolute perfection in some respects, relative perfection in all others," was able consistently to embrace all that is positive in either deism or pandeism." Harchern accepted the label of panentheism for his beliefs, declaring that, "...panentheistic doctrine contains all of deism and pandeism except their arbitrary negations." Several theologians examined the relationship between the Catholic Church and pandeism. Charles Anselm Bolton states in a 1963 article, Beyond the Ecumenical, Pandeism, that he first came upon this extension of ecumenism into pandeism among some Roman Catholic scholars interested primarily in the reunion of the churches, Roman, Orthodox, Anglican, and wondered, what is the ultimate aim of the Curia in promoting the pandeist movement? Bolton noted that to unite with Hindus and Buddhists, Christians should explore the hidden reality 
the ultimate reality, the infinite, the absolute, the everlasting, the all-pervading spirit that marks the religious experience of the Orient. Quote, the impact of this line of thought on Christianity was examined by Rus's John Rush Dooney, who wrote in his 1971 The One and the Many, Studies in the Philosophy of Order and Ultimacy that the position of Pope Paul came close to being a pandeism, and pandeism is the logical development of the virus of Hellenic thought, and further that a sincere idealist, implicitly pandeist in faith, deeply concerned with the problems of the world and of time, can be a Ghibelline pope, and Dante's Ghibellines have at last triumphed." Theologian Bert B. Beach wrote in 1974 that, "...during the Vatican Council there was criticism from WCC circles," to the effect that, "...ecumenism was being contaminated by pandeist and syncretistic tendencies." Robert A. Heinlein especially enjoyed this idea, and raised it in several of his works. Literary critic Dan Schneider wrote of Heinlein's Stranger in A Strange Land that Jubal Harshaw's belief in his own free will was one, which Mike, Jill, and the Fosterites misinterpret as a pandeistic urge, thou art God. Heinlein himself, in his Aphorisms of Lazarus Long, in his 1973 book Time Enough for Love wrote, God split himself into a myriad parts that he might have friends. This may not be true, but it sounds good and is no sillier than any other theology." A 1995 news article quoted this use of the term by Jim Garvin, a Vietnam veteran who became a Trappist monk in the Holy Cross Abbey of Berryville, Virginia. Garvin described his spiritual position as, "...pandeism or pan and deism, something very close to the Native American concept of the all-pervading Great Spirit." The following year, Pastor Bob Borage of the Genevan Institute for Reformed Studies wrote that, "...if God was the proximate cause of every act it would make all events to be God in motion." Quote dot. That is nothing less than pantheism, or more exactly, pandeism. Borage rejects this model, observing that in Christianity, "...the Creator is distinct from His creation. The reality of secondary causes is what separates Christian theism from pandeism." Borage concludes by challenging that calling God the author of sin demand s a pandeistic understanding of the universe effectively removing the reality of sin and moral law. Topic: 21st century developments. More recently, pandeism has been classed as a logical derivation of German philosopher Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz's proposition that ours was the best of all possible worlds. In 2010, author William C. Lane contended that if divine becoming were complete, God's kenosis God's self emptying for the sake of love would be total. In this pandeistic view, nothing of God would remain separate and apart from what God would become. Any separate divine existence would be inconsistent with God's unreserved participation in the lives and fortunes of the actualized phenomena. Acknowledging that American philosopher William Rowe has raised a powerful, evidential argument against ethical theism, Lane further contended that pandeism offers an escape from the evidential argument from evil. However, it does not count against pandeism. In pandeism, God is no superintending, heavenly power, capable of hourly intervention into earthly affairs. No longer existing. Above. God cannot intervene from above and cannot be blamed for failing to do so. Instead God bears all suffering, whether the fawns or anyone else's. Even so, a skeptic might ask, Why must there be so much suffering? Why could not the world's design omit or modify the events that cause it? In pandeism, the reason is clear, to remain unified, a world must convey information through transactions. Reliable conveyance requires relatively simple, uniform laws. Laws designed to skip around suffering-causing events or to alter their natural consequences i.e., their consequences under simple laws would need to be vastly complicated or, equivalently, to contain numerous exceptions. Cartoonist and pundit Scott Adams has written two books on religion, God's Debris 2001, and The Religion War 2004, of which God's Debris lays out a theory of pandeism, in which God blows itself up to see what will happen, which becomes the cause of our universe. 
In God's Debris, Adams suggests that followers of theistic religions such as Christianity and Islam are inherently subconsciously aware that their religions are false, and that this awareness is reflected in their consistently acting like these religions, and their threats of damnation for sinners, are false. In a 2017 interview Adams said these books would be his ultimate legacy. In 2010 German astrophysicist and popular scientist Harold Lesch observed in a debate on the role of faith in science, Suppose we would find the all-encompassing law of nature, we are looking for so that finally we could assure proudly, the world is built up this way and no differently, immediately it would create a new question, what is behind this law, why is the world set up just so? This leads us beyond the limits of science in the field of religion. As an expert, a physicist should respond, we do not know, we'll never know. Others would say that God authored this law, that created the universe. A pandeist might say that the all-encompassing law is God. In 2011, social scientist Niall Douglas wrote that in pandeism, God is growth, God is structure, knowledge, God is everything and nothing simultaneously. And, rather heretically for the Abrahamic religions, to perceive i.e. to cognate i.e. to be of matter i.e. to be structured energy generating a gravimetric field is an aspect of God relating to another aspect of God through light, which is of course God. In this, the underlying metaphysics are most definitely pandeist. Alan Dawes' 2011 book The God Franchise, though mentioning pandeism in passing as one of numerous extant theological theories, declines to adopt any ism as encompassing his view, though Dawes' theory includes the human experience as being a temporarily segregated sliver of the experience of God. This aspect of the theology of pandeism along with pantheism and panentheism has been compared to the biblical exhortation in Acts 17 verse 28 that in him we live and move and have our being. While the Wycliffe Bible Encyclopedia had in 1975 described the religion of Babylon as clearly a type of pandeism formed from a synthesis of Christianity and paganism. Another Christian theologian, Graham Ward, insists that attention to Christ and the Spirit delivers us from pantheism, pandeism, and process theology, and Catholic author Al Cresta observes that New Age Cosmologies reject materialism, naturalism and physicalism. They are commonly pantheistic or pandeistic. They frequently try to commandeer quantum physics and consciousness studies to illustrate their conception of the cosmos. Renegade priest Paul Kramer has deemed Pope Francis a pandeist who does not believe in the transcendent God and creator of Catholicism, but in the immanent divine principle of paganism, the life-giving world soul anima mundi within the universe. Describing this as a creed, remarkably like a synthesis of the belief systems of Lord Shaftesbury, Sick, Friedrich Schleiermacher, Benedict Spinoza, Auguste Comte, and Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. Also in 2011, in a study of Germany's Hesse region, German sociologist of religion and theologian Michael N. Eberts and German television presenter and author Meinhard Schmidt Degenhard concluded that six religious orientation types can be distinguished. Christians, quote dash quote, non-Christian theists, quote dash quote, cosmotheists, quote dash quote, deists, pandists, and polytheists, quote dash quote, atheists, quote dash quote, others, quote dot quote. Pandeism has also been described as one of the older spiritual and religious traditions whose elements are incorporated into the New Age movement, but also as among the handful of spiritual beliefs which are compatible with modern science. In 2013, Australian religious studies scholar Raphael Letaster proposed that pandeism could be the most likely God concept of all. In January 2016, a Kickstarter fundraising effort successfully funded a book titled Pandeism, an anthology, set to contain articles from over a dozen different writers examining pandeism from many different points of view, thus being the broadest examination of the theory yet made. The book includes writings by Bernardo Castrop, Raphael Letaster, Anthony Peake, Michael Arnheim, Zoltan Istvan, Robert G. Brown, and William Walker Atkinson, father of the philosophy of the law of attraction. Topic: <laughs> Notable pandists and pandeistic thinkers. Alfred, Lord Tennyson, Robert A. Heinlein. 
Bruce Perry See also Advaita Vedanta Catholic Church and Pandeism Creative Evolution, by Henri Bergson, Chapter 4 Deus Otiosis God's Debris, by Scott Adams Ayatism Lila Hinduism Omnism Panentheism Tat Tvam Asi Topic Notes Topic External Links Institute for Pandeism Studies The Pandeist Theorem by Robert G. Brown excerpt from A Theorem Concerning God The Parallels of Pandeism by Bernardo Castrop Coilas, a Pandeistic Religion Pandeism, an anthology website Pandeism. Info compares Pandeism to related philosophies Discussion of creative evolution from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy